Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we are making a coffee organizer with my daughter Melody. Hi. So let's dive in. This is a fun project with my daughter. And yes, of course, we're going to be starting this with a uh, three quarter thick white oak. Uh, this is a very large board, 12 and a half inches wide. And uh, it is a little bit thinner, a little bit sh narrower than I would want, uh, but I'm modifying the designs a little bit so that we go to 12 and a half as opposed to 13 inches. And so this means we need to break it down. And I actually have recently started using the hard point cheap junk saws for breaking down as opposed to using the big buck saw. Uh, I find they work very well for that. Uh, they don't, I don't need a clean cut and uh, they cut relatively quickly. And when they're out, then I throw it out and grab a new one and they're, you know, five, six bucks. So that's not a huge issue. First thing I want to do is joint the edge flat and that way we have something to mark off of. And so I'm going to grab a jointer plane and then teach my daughter how to do it. You just hit the high spots. Don't hit everything, just hit the high spots. And the nice thing about the jointer plane is it only hits the high spots. It can't hit the low spots because they dip below what the blade can catch. And so you keep going until you get a full width, full shaving all the way down along it without a belly. And just like that, we have a nice jointed edge that we can mark everything else off of. Uh, we're marking this out to fit the uh, coffee canisters that we have underneath it. Uh, and so everything is spaced out to our specific needs. It'll have one shelf and drawer and then a space for the espresso machine to go on top. So we're going to start by cutting out the, the legs. And Melody chose she wanted uh, one of the two side legs to have this knot piece in it. So yeah, we are keeping that. And it adds a nice little bit of character. So we're going to uh, rip these down. Now, this is one of these times where I, I, I really want to grab the saw and go to it myself, but it's a chance to teach. Where are you going wrong? How do you need to twist the saw? Where do you need to hold it? How do you put pressure on it? And so allowing my daughter to do it is a chance for her to learn. So usually I will grab the tool and do some of it, and then I will have her do it for a while and I can uh, guide her along. Uh, and then sometimes when we just have a whole bunch of it to do it, I'll just grab and finish it up. And uh, when it's her project, she can do it completely by herself. But in this case, I'm just teaching her, so letting her take it step by step. So she watches what I'm doing and learns from it. And then when she takes it, then she gets to learn all those individual things and I can talk her through and show her what's wrong with it. We're going to be squaring up the ends of these, and rather than using a shooting board, we're just going to freehand them. Because they are so long, uh, the shooting board doesn't work quite as well for that. And so it is nice to be able to learn to freehand shoot a board. It's relatively easy. You just don't plane all the way through. You stop before going out the other side, and then that allows you to adjust one side or the other until they are matching square. And so learning how to hold the plane and run it along it is just a... Uh, uh, it's a skill that seems very obvious, but once you've been doing it for a while, uh, it just comes naturally. Uh, until that point, the only way to learn it is to do it. And so I'll demonstrate, hand it to her, let her do it, and then I can correct her and guide her along the process. And it's, it's kind of fun to learn for me as well, because not only am I doing some of the work, but I'm actually then showing her and I get to then see oh, yeah, I forgot I actually learned that at one point, and all these little micro-adjustments that my body already knows, uh, it's good to remember um, all the things that I had gone through at one point. Now we're going to rip these boards down to their final width. So I'm going to find the narrowest point on all the boards and then set up my panel gauge uh, to that. And with the panel gauge, I can then mark along them. Now there's only about a quarter inch at the thickest spot. So at this point, it's, it's a little easier and faster to come into the scrub plane and clean it out. And that leaves a, a wild cut on there, but then I can come in with my jointer, or I think in this case it's the five and a half, and then smooth them down to the line we've drawn. Now we have one leg, we need to then cut the other leg. And the two legs are the same, and the shelf and the top are the same, and so we're just making sure that those are the same length. They don't have to be, um, they don't have to be any specific length as long as they actually match. So then we're, we did some of the ripping at the bench vertical, and I thought it'd be a good chance to then to show her how to uh, do it at the, the saw bench. And uh, yeah, this is ripping, this is cross-cutting, um, but it's going to be the same thing um, as ripping, but uh, cross-cutting. It's just a, a wide board, so you're going to be doing a lot of the same maneuvers. And it's a chance to let her go at it, because it's going to take her a lot longer than it's going to take me. And so I have to uh, exhibit some patience and, and let her do it. 
Um, unfortunately, this project, because we were recording it with, uh, with Luke, uh, that meant that I had a, a certain timeline that I had to get done. So I'd let her do as much as we could, and then we had to move on. Now, for the top corners into the top playlist, we're going to dovetail them in. And this is a, a long series of dovetails, which is really fun. Uh, lay them out with the dividers and go to town. Uh, doing a long series of dovetails is just like doing any other set of dovetails. Uh, they, they go relatively easily. It's just a lot more of them. I'm teaching her with the Cat's Moses dovetail jig, and this makes it very, very easy to learn, and it's a, a fantastic training wheel. So if you ever want to do it freehand, this teaches you. You still have to hold the saw right. You still have to run the saw. And once you start getting that body mechanic of what the saw is actually doing, uh, you can eventually move away from using the jig. But it, until then, it helps you. It holds it in place, and it gets you very, very close to where you want to be. And so that's why I love using the, the Cat's Moses um, dovetail jig. So we're going to remove most of the waste and then come in and chisel it back. Um, some of these we ended up uh, cutting out most of the waste in between with a coping saw, and some of them we came back and uh, just chiseled them out. And that way I can kind of teach her multiple different ways of doing it. It's nice to be able to do um, several different ways together so that she can see there's not just one way. You can find the way that works best for you. Then I like to refine all of the edges with a file and get them all very, very close to what I want. With the tails cut, now we can transfer the line and do the pins. And uh, don't let it move. Don't let it move. Uh, yeah, very, very carefully make all of these marks. And it, with big ones like this, you just have to be extra careful. Don't let them move. Make sure you mark them out so you're cutting on the right side of the line. With the tails, it doesn't matter quite as much if you cut on the wrong side of the line. Then, oh well, you still haven't cut the pins. Then you can make the pins match. But now that you have the tails, you have to be very, very careful with the pins and make sure that they, they stay true. Again, chop them out exactly the same as dovetails, um, but the other side. And then test it. And you'll see at some point the board goes in well, and then there in the middle it's not going in at all. That lets me know I need to do some cleanup here. And so I can see where is it not moving. And that's the area I can come back in and clean it up. And this one I need to do, do a decent amount of chisel work. Chiseling is when you have a lot of wood to move. And then you can come in with a file and do the detail until it fits down on there. With the big ones, you do have to put in a little bit more weight, but uh, it's, it's not as difficult as it would seem. We're going to move on to the drawer that needs to be on this. Now, unfortunately, we uh, we didn't get a lot of the footage for the drawer, but it's basically going to be the same thing. It's dovetailed corners and a drawer bottom. We're going to cut all of the drawer sides, front and back, um, to the dimensions of what we just cut. And so I didn't make the drawer until I had the body to fit it into, because if there was any change in the body when we're making it, now we can make the drawer fit it exactly. I'm going to make it about a 16th inch narrower and a 16th inch shorter than the slot it's going to fit into. So with the legs in place, we know what all those measurements are, and then we can make the pieces we need for them. For the drawer bottom, we're getting a three quarter inch piece, and we're going to rip it down. Now, it's very important when using a big frame saw, you get this thing tight. And yes, very, very tight. And I'm trying to get her to tighten it as much as she will, and it's not enough. We need to go there. It's got to be really, really tight. Um, otherwise, it starts to wander inside the cut. And so we're going to rip down this. And uh, this may look like a very boring process, but it's not boring. It's actually sawing. And it's actually a rather enjoyable process when you, when you get it down. Um, you can get your body weight into it and actually run at it pretty quickly. And uh, even Melody was able to do quite a bit. The saw is fairly big, and so it takes a lot more control. But once you put a little weight into it, it does the work pretty well. And after about 15-20 uh, minutes, we had this resawed down, and not that bad. Now we need to join these together, and that means we need to joint them. So we're going to put those boards back together and then joint them at the same time. This way, if there's any deviation and angle from one to the other, they correspond to each other. So we can glue them together, and the two edges don't have to be perfectly square. They just have to be the same angle. And when you plane them together, they end up being the same angle. Lay them down on these and clamp it all up. It is very handy having an apprentice in the shop when you're doing glue up because there's lots of times where you just need another hand and it's really good to be able to crank these down on. Um, this particular one is a little bit finicky, so it's nice to have her. You see I put the clamps on the side to hold that center joint together and keep it nice and straight. Now we're going to move our uh, um, eyes back onto that shelf that the drawer will actually fit on. Uh, and so this can't be dovetailed into the sides because 
it has to be put into the middle of the board. So in this case, we're actually going to be making a mortise and tenon that goes into it. And so it's going to be basically exactly like a dovetail, except for it's not angled. This is kind of a finger joint on this end. And then when it goes into the board, it's just going to be a mortise through slot that they fit into. Now, there's no reason for this to be through slot. I, I could have rabbited it into the side or uh, put uh, dados in like a normal shelf. But I wanted to give this a little bit more strength and durability not that this particular project needs that strength and durability because the shelf is going to be on there and there's going to be some lateral force and there's a little bit of strength on top. Um, I want to make this a little more solid. So I opted for through tenons. And uh, so at this point, it's just like creating dovetails, except for they're straight down. And the stock removal in between is the exact same. You can use the coping saw or you can come in and chisel it out. Pair down to the side and uh, then remove the waste. And that allows you to chop down a little farther and then remove the waste and then chop down a little farther. And it's a relatively fun job. Anytime you're chopping out chunks of wood, um, it's fun. Now, these little blocks we're working with here, you're going to hold on to those. And I'll be talking about those later at the end. So all these, these chunks that you chop off, those may be very, very valuable. Um, and we'll, we'll point that out later. So move all of the waste until we have a series of tenons, and then I need to go over to the board and lay them out. And I'm going to use this to transfer uh, exactly where those tenons meet the board, the tops and bottoms, and draw all the lines so I know exactly where the holes are. Then the important thing is I need to transfer that around the board and make the same marks on both sides of the board. Once we have all those marks in there, then we can come in with the auger belt bit, and uh, this is the actual boring part. Uh, we're drilling out, uh, these are slightly smaller than three quarter inch because the board going in is three quarter inch. I don't want to cut it full width in case the auger bit is ever so slightly out of alignment. And uh, with Melody running it, yeah, it does wobble a little bit. And this is actually a surprisingly difficult skill for kids to learn because it requires a lot of control with both hands working against each other. It's, it is really a, a moment of patting your head and rubbing your stomach. But with all the holes drilled, we can come in and remove the waste and chisel down. Um, this is a, a very fun step. Um, just stay away from your lines as long as possible. And once you get it really close, then hit your lines. And then you can refine it just a little bit with a final rasp and make sure you get rid of everything in there. Test your fit, see where it needs to work. Test your fit, see where it needs to work. And then you can drive it down in. And so we're going to do a, a dry up, uh, a dry fit up on this whole process. Make sure that everything works the way we want. And once everything fits together, then we can actually do the glue up. And I'm going to be using a simple PVA on this, um, making sure that any spot where long grain to long grain touches, I, I make sure to put extra glue there because those are the really important things. Um, putting the long grain to the end grain, yeah, it does help a little bit, but it's not going to help as much in the long grain, uh, long term as the long grain to long grain. So we're going to put the shelf into both of the legs, and then we have all of these pins standing up that we can then drive down on the tails. Um, smear the glue in every spot possible and make sure it all wiggles down into place. We're going to put some clamps on this because those tenons need to be pushed in all the way. Uh, and uh, then it's nice to be able to clamp the top down all the way, make sure that the dovetails are seated fully. So lots of clamps, squeeze it down and uh, let it set aside, then come back later and take them off. Now, everything at this point is a little messy. You see, I had a lot of glue squeeze out of this. That's really not a problem because we're going to be coming back through and we're going to be cleaning up all of the tenons that are sticking out and the tails that go past a little bit. And we'll plane those all down. A card scraper can help you get into those inside corners. But on the outside, it's really easy because you can just set up the plane and you can run past it and do the ingrain into the, the face grain and get a really nice clean cut. I, I really enjoy this process with the smoothing plane because you can, you can clean them up nicely. I'll use my low angle to hit most of the, uh, the high end grain that's sticking past a little bit. And uh, then I can come back in and do the final bit with the smoothing plane. And yeah, it's very, very pleasing when they all fit in just like that. <laughs> so uh, for most of the, the final uh, finish on this, it's going to be the card scraper. And this is a fun one to teach Melody because uh, it, it's one of those skills that once you get it, everything else just kind of becomes so much so much easier getting nice curls um, is is a skill but once you get it uh, everything is, is so much simpler for the face we're going to be using the plane to run around it and I want to make sure when I come to a corner you skew it 45 so that you're hitting both of them in line um, and so I bring everything down until it's about the same surface and then I'll take one pass going all the way around from one side to the other. Every time you come to a corner, skew the plane to 45 degrees and you can continue around the corner onto the other side. 
And then of course we're going to chamfer all the edges. And one of the nice things with a rabbiting block plane is you can actually use it to chamfer inside corners. Um, it allows you to, to, to cut up on it. You you just have to be very, very careful. Slide the, the edge in there and it runs right down it and creates a really nice tight inside corner chamfer. Um, now it is just as easy to do it with a chisel, um, but having this just makes it that one step easier and it's kind of fun. So yeah, new tool, new skill, lots of fun. Now we are gonna be um, sanding this just with some 400 grit. I'm not really gonna gr sand it down. I'm just creating some dust and working that into the surface a bit. That is gonna allow the finish to soak in just a little bit more. Uh, Rubio Monaco usually says go to 220. I find I like it more at about, uh, um, uh, about 400 grit. And so it's just different uh, settings on here. Now those little blocks that I was talking about earlier, save those and you can chop them up and cut them to the sizes of the holes coming from your drawer bottom. Yeah, we lost the video of clamping and gluing up the drawer, um, but there's always those holes that come through if you cut a through groove for the hole, uh, for the, the bottom to fit into. So we're gonna use a little bit of CA glue, tap it down in, uh, and then um, hit it with a little bit of activator and it comes out. So any of those little gaps you want to hide, those small blocks from the dovetails uh, actually work really well. You can chisel them down to exactly the right size, flush cut saw them, and then chisel them um, perfectly flush, come in with a plane, and clean up the whole surface. And just like that, they, they disappear. Uh, last little detail we have to add is a drawer pull on this. So we're going to find center and center of the board, mark that, drill a little hole and one little drawer pull. Um, I had a, I have a bucket of random hardware and so we just grabbed a drawer pull out of that one that kind of matches the style. It's a um, dirty bronze um, finish, but yeah, nice little style and it's nice to have a bucket of random hardware so you don't have to go to the store to buy a drawer pull. <laughs> and we're just going to run the screw all the way through this because we don't have a, um, a face board to go on this and put it on there. Now some of you are going to talk that one of the corners is regular dovetails and the other one is a sunrise dovetail. I did a video recently doing the sunrise dovetail and I was thinking about uh, doing them all that way and I didn't and so we ended up with one one way and one the other way and I know it's going to really bug a lot of people but I actually kind of like it. It's kind of a weird little thing to start conversations. Now for the finish, Rubio Monocoat. It is my all-time favorite finish for furniture. Um, it's stupid easy. You just wipe it on uh, and let it soak in. Um, a heavier coat is, is uh, okay. Uh, we just want to let the wood soak up as much as it wants. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, come back, wipe it off, polish it off, and it's done. That's, that's all it needs. Um, you don't want to starve the surface. You want to put a lot on there. Um, you can move it around and squeegee it around, uh, but leave enough on there that it can soak in um, so that it gives you a really good protective finish, but you still see and feel the wood grain. It really looks like a simple um, light oil finish. And just like that, we now have a space to hold our espresso machine to go along with all the other coffee stuff. Yeah, um, it's kind of fun when two hobbies collide and I can have fun with my daughter. Happy! So there you have it. This is a project with my daughter and if you don't know she has her own woodworking channel called Melody's Workbench mm -hmm. and she'll be having a version of this video on her channel as well. Uh, as well as she's probably gonna be ramping up a few more videos coming soon on there. So if you want to watch a uh, 12 year old making furniture and other things, hop on over. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a simple little project and I wanted just to kind of experiment and play with things. And that's why there's different types of dovetails and different things on here. Uh, sorry, the footage for the drawer wasn't on there. Um, shot that ahead of time and then uh, forgot to record it. So we were having fun without you. <laughs> so I hope you like this. If you have any other thoughts, comments, ideas, throw those in the comments down below. That does actually help out the channel. Anytime you comment down below, even if it's just comment down below, or you hit the like, the share, subscribe, thank you. That really helps us grow. And if you'd like to take it even farther, you might notice that there's a whole bunch of names over there. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. Uh, without patrons or channel members here, we wouldn't exist. We're sponsored by you, the viewer. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or become a member, well, go down in the description down below or click the little join button and become one of the wonderful benevolent people over on Patreon. So thank you. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, I know a lot of you are going to be telling me I should have stained this and particularly used mocha.